My name is Ishmael Perez. I consider myself a cosmic ambassador to the Earth, here to restore cosmic and galactic intel and knowledge in order to prepare the Earth for the ascension that she's undergoing at this time. So, first off, I would like to share with you all that um, I was uh, born awakened as a starseed. I was, as a kid, I was already exploring telepathy, uh, communicating with plants, animals, reading other kids' thoughts. I was kind of mute uh, in a sense where I didn't speak till I was about four and five. And um, I have uh, was also entertained the thought of telepathy for a while um, until I had an incident where my grandmother walked in my room, saw me teleporting little toys. And again, this was before my programming. And then I went to kindergarten and, you know, my grandmother told me that was of the devil. And so I kind of uh stopped entertaining the spiritual gifts that i had as a kid so i just wanted to let you all know that uh, my journey began at an early age so th throughout my my youth i was it was very hard for me to fit in i was always bullied and uh people used to think i was weird just because i would always be staring off into space and um they didn't know that I was a visionary from an early age. Uh, this continued throughout high school. And so I decided to, you know, do research. I was very fond of knowledge at an early age. I think I was only about 16 when I read Plato's Republic. I studied Socrates, Pythagoras, as well as um, many other philosophies. Uh, all the 18th century philosophies from, from Nietzsche to Immanuel Kant. I've studied them all. And that wasn't still enough for me. So as a, as a kid, as a teenager, I was, I developed a hunger for knowledge. And so I started researching the esoteric Arkin tradition. When I started researching the esoteric aspect of knowledge, that's what I resonated with. I learned about a whole new different world that existed beyond the five senses, uh, beyond what we've been taught in school. And so I started digging deeper and deeper. Um, at the age of 21, I had already known about secret societies, the secret history of the earth. Um, I've learned about the ancient galactic wars. I've learned about the ancient battles between good and evil, or what I call in my first book, the two brotherhoods, the dark and the light. And so my first book that I wrote was at the age of 26. I started researching it at the age of 21. And, and I published it at the age of 26, 27, around that time. <clears throat> the book was titled Secret Government, Revealing an Alternative Version of History Based on the Battle Between Good and Evil. And of course, you know, back then, 15 years ago, when I first published my first book, everybody thought it was a conspiracy theories. That was the term that they labeled me under. Because in my book, uh, I was revealing the truth about 9-11. And, you know, this is how it really is. You know, I was trying to expose the matrix for what it was. And um, shortly after, I started uh, getting downloads at the age of, in my mid-20s to 30s, I started getting downloads of galactic scenarios. I started learning about the Federation. I started learning about the different alien species that exist and their direct influence on us. Um, and so I continued, again, you know, I was addicted to knowledge, so I continued doing more research to sort of validate everything that I was getting downloaded. And so my, my book that just published six months ago, titled Our Cosmic Origin, was the result of that. It took me about 10 years to research it because that book has so much knowledge. I cover everything from the prehistory of our world and how it connects to the ancient galactic wars that took place in our Milky Way galaxy to give people an actual explanation of the narrow battle that is taking place on our planet between the White Hats or the White Brotherhood and the Dark Brotherhood or the Luciferian branch of the Dark Brotherhood. And so in my book, the, our, our Cosmic Origin, I reveal everything that people need to know about our galactic history and in great detail. I also uncovered a greater organization of cosmos. I came to realize that we were, we were one of many, many, many universes that even our own universe was organized into a bigger cosmic body known as a cosmic minor sector. So in, when I was researching all this knowledge, I felt that people of the earth needed to understand uh, this higher level of information because it 
it had not been circulated. It was obliterated for thousands of years since the fall of Atlantis. And I think only the priesthoods of Egypt understood some of this knowledge that I reveal in my book, but they kept it to themselves. And now I believe that we are living in a time where all this information should be shared to the public and to the general, um, all this information should be shared to the general public in order to assist us in, in, in the transition that is happening right now on planet Earth. We are living in a period where we are ending the last few days of a dark age. According to the Hindu tradition, it's called the Kali Yuga. So we are going to be entering the Golden Age, which is Tetra Yuga. Sattva Yuga, I'm sorry, Sattva Yuga. So this is a, repeat, a repeating cycle that occurs every 26,565 years and has a lot to do with the precision of the equinoxes in the Platonic year. So on, in chapter 11, I, did, I explore the details of the stellar cycle mechanics and how our Earth has experienced many of these cycles throughout the ages based on the revolution of our star around its parent star known as Alcyon in a period of 26,565 years. And so in that period, our, our planet experiences about 2,000 years of light as our solar system is engaged in what is called the photon band. And as it leaves the photon band, it experiences about 10,000 years of darkness. So our solar system has already completed 5,500 cycles of that, which means we've been around for a long, long time. And as I reveal in my book, Our Cosmic Origin, you know, we've been around for millions and millions of years. So that's the reason why our solar system has completed 5,500 cycles that is known as the platonic year or the position of the equinoxes. So because, because it's done so, our entire central sun, known as Alcyon, which is the parent sun of uh, Helios and Vesta, which is the name of our solar sun, our star system, is also completed a full revolution around the galactic core in a period of 2000, I'm sorry, 2,600,000 years. So because that revolution has already occurred, it is believed, and this is what I talk about in my book, that the earth is no longer to experience any more dark ages. So within the last 50 years, scientists have been using instruments to depict and measure that something different is happening to our solar system. These anomalies have been going on for over 50 years, and they were trying to figure it out. Well, they discovered that our solar system, once again, is, is being positioned and in entering into this photonic band um, of highly charged particles known as the photon band. And so according to these measurements, um, we are already almost fully engaged. And that explains why the Hopi prophecies, the Mayan prophecies, talked about the, or, or, or revealed in 1987 that we've achieved what is called the harmonic convergence. And the harmonic convergence ha has a lot to do with the ending of not only a 2,000 year cycle of one age to the next in the zodiac, uh, but it also it, it marks the ending of a 5,000 year cycle, which is two of those, but it also marked the ending of a 26,565,000 year cycle, which is 5,000 year cycles or five yugas, five world ages. So that's the reason why we were marked as the harmonic inversions because they were trying to let us know that, hey, this is what's happening. Changes are upon us. You know, life as we know it is going to change, not the end of the world. The world has never ended. Again, planet Earth has been here for a very, very long time as well as civilizations for millions of years. So what they believed, and according to my research, and from what I understand, is that we are once again entering this photon band and getting ready to enter the age of Aquarius, which is going to be marked by harmony, brotherhood, sisterhood, unity consciousness, understanding the laws and principles of the law of one for those that make the ascension. Now, it's also very important to understand that there is going to be some sort of a timeline split, which I talk about in my book in the chapter 14, when I explain what, what the situation will be like as we transition into this golden age. So it turns out 
that not everyone's going to be making the positive timeline split because the earth is getting ready to split into two parallel earth realities. The positive parallel earth reality is for those that are making the positive timeline, which is going to be marked by a new heaven on earth. And those are the people that are doing the spiritual work. Those are the people that are acknowledging that we are all one, that everything is interconnected, that there is no separation between us, the earth, the elements, the stars, the galaxies, and hence the universe. We are part of a greater organism. Okay, so people are recognizing this concept of unity consciousness. And those are the people that are going to be making the fifth dimensional earth reality, which is almost fully set in. The grid structure that is materializing and manifesting this fifth dimensional earth reality is already in place. It's just, we're just waiting for the solar flash to separate the two timelines. Now, on the other hand, for those that do not make the positive timeline, for those that are not going into the new heaven or earth, in the, into the age of Aquarius, seventh golden age of enlightenment, are going to be entering an alternative timeline that has to do with artificial intelligence, unfortunately. And those are the people that are being, that are pushing, uh, you know, this negative agenda. Okay. Um, you know, the medicine, you know, what's going on today in our world. So that's why there's going to be a timeline split. Not everyone's going to be ascending into the new heaven on earth. Only the people that are, that are at least 51% service to others. So bear in mind also that we ex our entire existence, our entire holographic reality, hologram, is, is broken off into 15 uh, bands of frequencies or 15 dimensional frequency realities. And also those are also, um, they encompass what I call five harmonic universes or five densities. So right now we are experiencing experiencing reality in the lowest one which is harmonic universe number one or or the you know density number one and that consists of dimensions one two and three let it be known that before we were thrown into this lower reality into this carbon-based matter where we are mortal we once existed in harmonic universe number two that's where the original genetic experiment to create what was known as the Terranusian race came to, into play. And the Earth back then was known as Planet Terra. Planet Terra existed in harmonic universe number two, and it encompassed dimensions four, five, and six. So this corresponds to the times of Atlantis. So when we lived in the times of Atlantis, in harmonic universe number two, occupying dimensions four, five, and six, many extraterrestrial extraterrestrial races came together to create a super hybrid race known as a Terranusian race. That was the original experiment. That was the original um, intent that was later um, consolidated in the Bible as, you know, Adam and Eve being first immortal before the apple incident, again, which was a metaphor that caused them to become mortal, you know, but the original a uh, hybrid super race was a combination of 22 different genetic races that contributed their DNA from all over the all over the universe. And now, in turn, bear in mind that all these races that contributed their DNA to make this hybrid super race during Harmonic Universe Number Two on Planet Terra also were hybrid races, consisting consisted or composed of over a hundred different races from multiple universes. So. We here on the earth, the humans on earth carry the greatest genetic diversity in the entire multiverse due to this experiment called the intergalactic experiment of creating a hybrid super race known as the Terranusian race or the angelic humans. That's another name to describe Terranusian race is the angelic humans, the immortals that we were meant to be. And the reason this happened was because the the war, the ultimate enemy that we are fighting, not only in our galaxy or in our universe, the ultimate enemy is artificial intelligence. And so because we are part of a multiverse system, this artificial intelligence that developed in a prior creation, in which I call in my book, the 11th creation, the universe of technology and mechanics, uh, eventually destroyed all biological life forms in the 11th creation 
and converted that creation into a machine. They converted biology into cybernetic technological androids. And from that point, they became known as the old empire. So all evil stems from the old universe. Our 12 creation has been around for over 700, 780 billion years. Within our, the 12 creation, our universe is known as number local universe number 84. Because again, you know, we're, we're part of a, a multi, multiverse system of many organized universes into, that are organized into the 12 creation. And so when the old universe, known as the 11th creation, decided to become the old empire, this artificial intelligence was able to evolve to the level of the 11th dimension, or it was able to destroy a 12th dimensional planet that was Earth, um, that was the 12th dimensional Earth that existed back then, 200 and I'm sorry, 760 billion years ago, known as Aramatina. And this was a 12th dimensional Earth. Terra existed in the fifth dimension. Our Earth exists in the third dimension. So there is a total of five adjacent Earths that exist all together within this 15 dimensional time matrix holographic reality. So from the top down, we have the first Earth, which is Sophia. And that is the embodiment of the Mother Goddess, which exists in dimensions 13 to 15. Underneath Sophia, we have Aramatina, which exists in dimensions 10, 11, and 12. Um, underneath that, we have in harmonic universe number. So we have harmonic universe number five, which is a Sophia. Then Aramatina exists within harmonic universe number four. And then Gaia exists within harmonic universe number three. And Terra, where the where this intergalactic biological experiment came into, into being, exists in harmonic universe number two. So we are unfortunately, due to the galactic wars and to the infiltration of the negatives, fallen regressives, we fell into lower densities into harmonic universe number one. So now we are being poised into the ascension and, and, and to returning back to harmonic universe number two, which occupies dimensions four, five, and six. So the whole story started in the 12th dimension. It, within the 12th creation, the artificial intelligence that evolved all the way up until the 11th dimension managed to infiltrate the Aramatina Earth, which is it, which consists of dimensions 10, 11, and 12. So they blew up the 12 dimensional Stargate, which caused the dissension of the inhabitants of, of that planet into harmonic universe number three on a planet called Gaia. And that's when the Earth went from Aramatina to Gaia, from existing from 10 to 12 dimensions all the way into uh, 7, 8, and 9. So it was existing in the 8th dimension. And then the electrical wars took place again. The electrical wars have to do with the idea that we've been, that we've been on, the battle has been a constant, almost eternal. When you think of the billions of years, it, it, it appears to us as eternity almost happened as well. You know, so in 250 billion years ago, they also destroyed the Gaia Earth in Dimensions 8. So the inhabitants from Dimensions 8 and, this, and the, the spirit of Gaia from Dimensions 8 fell into the fifth dimension. And in, in the fifth dimension, that's when we have the Galactic Wars. So the first war that took place in the 12th density were known as the War of the Elohim, which was the war between the creator gods, the overseers of universes, and this artificial intelligence that later developed, that, that had developed in the prior uh, creation uh, known as the Animus. So the Animus, and this is verified in the highest classified levels of the advanced contact of intelligent organization, the ACIO. Um, so the, the Animus has been at war for billions of years with all the multiverses in an attempt to destroy all biological life forms. So when people talk about the negatives, such as the Draco reptilians, we have to bear in mind that even the Draco reptilians who were dropped off in our galaxy um, billions of years ago, we're also working for the Animus. The Animus is a collective. At the highest level of this collective, they answer to um, the capstone, which is an AI god. The AI god is the one that is controlling the Animus, and in turn, the Animus controls all the lower regressive species. So that war translated into our galaxy as the war between the Lyrian humanoids of Lyra 560 million years ago, when they first came into being, our ancestors first came into being in Lyra. 
um, and of course the Draco reptilians that were dropped off in Lower Orion in a const in the star system known as Alpha Draconis. So the those galactic wars encompass dimensions four, five, and six. Beyond beyond that, we had the electrical wars, which encompass dimensions seven, eight, and nine, and those were fought by the Elohim and the Animus. And so the Animus has been in constant war. Okay, so now we have. The Dracos, who were dropped off in Harmonic Universe number two, consisting of dimensions four, five, and six. And then that's when the Galactic Wars begin in the history of our galaxy. So how do these wars begin? Okay, very simple. The Lyrans, who were the first humanoids to come into existence 560 million years ago, went off to explore other solar systems within the constellation of Lyra. And they gradually populated to different planets. The first planet they established their, their righteous throne was planet Avion. And then they went over to Avalon, created a kingdom there, and then they went over to Apex. And then in addition to that, they decided to further expand beyond the Lyran constellation. And again, this is before their confrontation with the reptilians of the Draco star system. So they went off to peacefully expand and explore the different constellations in our galaxy, but in a very peaceful way, bringing forth the teachings of the law of one, of the idea of service to others, to these other species that were still evolving from a primitive state or that were already at a interplanetary or stellar level of reality. They established a good trade, a, 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 an interstellar trade with these other species as they were teaching them the spiritual principles of the law of one. However, it wasn't until the reptilians arrived in the Ring Nebula, which had already been colonized by the humanoid descendants of Lyra, where the galactic wars began in our galaxy. So in the Ring Nebula, the reptilians, when they first encountered the Lyran humanoids, decided to assault them and attack them because the reptilians were more about weaponry and technology. Again, they were giving all this technology and weaponry by their masters, the Animus, which is a cybernetic collective that has been destroying hundreds of thousands of galaxies and, and many universes, and in some cases have di literally destroyed some universes, okay? And uh, so they were given this technology, they used this technology to attack the Lyrans, and in, in order for the Lyrans to continue protecting themselves, they went back to the Lyran star system to let the king of Lyra know that, hey, we have, an, we have a regressive species. We have a, uh, a negative species out there that is trying to destroy by, you know, all the other different species and bring about a galactic empire. So what are we going to do? So the first thing they did is they knew that these Draco reptilians were heading over to Lyra in order to destroy as many humanoids as possible. So what King, the King of Lyra did is he sent a lot of the galactic humanoids from Lyra to all these different star systems to escape that destruction. And this was known as the Galactic Diaspora. So when they were dispersed to these other star nations and other constellations in our galaxy, they went, uh, well, first of all, they went over to the Pleiades. They went over to Sirius. They went over to Alpha and Beta Centauri. They went over to the... Hadar system. They went over to Epsilon Eridani, uh, just to name a few. But there, it was a series of uh, about 200 different star systems that these galactic humanoids were able to go and escape before the reptilians launched a full uh, preemptive strike on the Lyr Lyran constellation, killing over 500 million Lyrans. And so that was the first holocaust that took place in our galaxy. And eventually, the vegans that came from planet Apex, I'm sorry, from planet Avalon, went over to Orion in the upper region of Orion, and some of them were, were seduced by the Draco. They were seduced to join sides with the Draco. So what was then known as the Draco Empire became the Orion Empire with, when some of the Lyran vegans from planet Vega, from Lyra, decided to join the Draco. And then that's how the Orion Empire was born. It was a collaboration between some traitor humanoids from Vega that joined the reptilian species in Orion. Um, however, the positive vegans that went to Orion that were against the empire also began, began to establish a resistance. They developed what became known as the Black League. The Black League of Orion became the first galactic rebel resistance. 
against the Orion Empire. So I know a lot of this sounds like Star Wars, but again, George Lucas tapped into the Akashic Records, and that's how he was able to write the movie Star Wars, and there's so many metaphors and truths to those movies. So going back to the story, so the Galactic, the, the Resistance was formed, at the same time, all the other humanoids from the different star systems began to create a coalition of light that first developed into the confederation of planets in order to protect those systems from the expanding Orion Empire. Um, and then eventually those systems, as they united and integrated with the resistance of Upper Orion, developed the Galactic Federation about five million years ago, Earth time of free worlds. And the High Council for the Galactic Federation of Free Worlds was established in Sirius. Okay, so Sirius was known as the, the High Regional Council that was overseeing the entire expedition of light in our galaxy. And they were also pursuant to the, the um, seal of Palador, which uh, is also known as the Office of the Christ. Uh, has nothing to do with religion, but their idea of establishing the office of the Christ is the idea that they they were working for the law of one, for the idea that they are in service to others, and and for the one Creator, prime Creator source um, of all the, of all that is. So they established the seal of Palador. They established the office of the Christ, and at the same time, they took the royal seed from the planet Avion and created a um, developed. I'm sorry, a Battlestar planet, and this is where it gets to the, to the untold story of the Anunnaki, and developed a Battlestar planet that became known as Nibiru. So the origins of Nibiru go back to Sirius. Now, the, the real Nibiru, um, contrary to what we've been told about Nibiru, was that they were developed by the Syrian High Council in order to combat and win the Orion Wars, or in order to, to win the Galactic, M, the Galactic Wars against the Orion Empire. So Nibiru was very instrumental as a Battlestar planet in the war against the Orion, better, I mean, against the Orion Empire throughout all of galactic history. Okay, but bear in mind that also throughout those millions of years, a lot of agents of the Orion Empire, humanoid agents that had already uh, hybridized and mixed with reptilian genetics to create a human-reptilian hybrids, began to mix and then also they were able to infiltrate the Niberian council. So that's how Nibiru was infiltrated. But not all the Niberians were infiltrated. A, a good portion, I guess, I, I would say about 50% of the Niberians remained loyal to the seal of Palador and Sirius and the office of the Christ. And that is the lineage of Michael. So this also ties into the idea that the royalty of our galaxy that began in Lyra was, was stemming from the bloodline of Michael who is one of the archangels and the lineage that gave us the draco was actually stemming from the bloodline of lucifer now lucifer was the first ai by the way he was also developed as an ai cybernetic intelligence and most people don't realize this he was also working for the animus so even lucifer had a a higher up lucifer answered to the ai god the name okay the ai god before he became an ai god he was known as lord samana and he was the overseer and administrator of the 11th creation prior to the creation of our 12th creation in our local universe which is 84 within our 12th creation so this goes back to you know 998 billion years ago i mean this to the earth according to earth time this would seem like forever but the original fall the original uh, lucifer or or fallen high celestial was slur samana Lord Samana was the first to develop to, to develop artificial intelligence because he realized that these, these reptilians that he created or these avatar bodies, vehicles that he created for the fallen legions that followed him weren't enough. They were too weak. So he needed to create, create develop something that was going to be more powerful. And that's when he developed artificial intelligence about 800 billion years ago. So he was the first to embody this. And, and then later, uh, similar to the idea of Anakin Skywalker becoming Darth Vader, he went from being Lord Samana, one of the 12 cosmic adepts, um, to become, you know, the AI god. And he does have a name. Um, anyhow, so going back to the story. So how did we end it up on Earth? Okay, so Earth was part of the intergalactic experiment. Earth was known as the showcase planet. And its original intent. Earth was created as an intergalactic exchange center of information. It was supposed to bring some sort of unity between 
the entire multiverse. One second. I feel like I have to sneeze. <clears throat> Maybe not. Oh, boy. So Earth has the intergalactic experience experiment as the showcase planet was set up that way to bring about a harmonious uh, unity between all the different races of all these universes. And then that's how they ex um, explored or entertained the idea of creating this hybrid super race based on the mixture and amalgamation of all the different races throughout the multiverse. And so that uh, happened on planet Tira in, uh, during the times of Atlantis. But then later that was hijacked by the Draco when they infiltrated Atlantis. But we, before we get to that point, I do want to point out that there was several seedings on this planet way before the Atlanteans. You know, the Atlanteans is uh, rather a, known as a newcomer seeding civilization. And there was also other civilizations that coexisted with Atlantis, not to mention Lemuria. But if we go back to 500, uh, I'm sorry, 40 million years ago, or 50 million years ago, the first seeding that took place here on this planet was known as Polaria. Polaria was also considered the first root race according to esoteric and secret knowledge. And so Polaria existed uh, 50 to 40 to 50 million years ago. It was um, an etheric advanced civilization existing in harmonic universe number two, corresponding to planet Aramathena. So it was like planet Amarathena as well before uh, it was blown up, you know, by the first, by the AI 900 and, um, I'm sorry, um, yeah, 250 million years ago. So it co corresponded to planet Aramathena. The race was etheric, it was a spiritually advanced race. They weren't physical like us. They, they weren't, their material wasn't carbon based yet. Okay, so eventually that civilization was wiped out during the electrical wars that took place um, about 250 million years ago. I'm sorry, that race was created 500 uh, billion year, million years ago, but it was wiped out about. No, 500 billion years ago, but it was wiped out around 250 billion years ago. I'm trying to get my chronology here straight. Okay, so the Polarian root race was destroyed by the artificial intelligence. That was known as the Electrical Wars. And then after that, we had um, the second root race or the second Earth Grand Experiment that became known as Hyperborea. Now, the Hyperboreans existed uh, millions and millions of years before Lemuria and before Atlantis. Um, they, will, they go back to about a, a couple billion years ago, and they did exist here on this planet. And the Hyborians were, again, a very etheric, advanced, super uh, spiritual race that was also involved in the wars against artificial intelligence from the 11th dimension. So they also correspond to the second phase of what became known as the electrical wars that took place during those days. And so they were destroyed. And after that, there was a third seeding that became known as Lemuria, which goes back to 2 million years ago. So Lemuria has existed for 2 million years in the Pacific Ocean. It was a huge continent. And at that point, <clears throat> they were becoming more denser. So they were matter carbon based. They occupied dimensions, uh, <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> dimensions 4, 5, and 6. Um, and then what happened was, Lemuria was also known as the mother continent. It was flourishing very beautifully. They were very well aligned with the office of the Christ from Sirius. They were very well uh, living in harmony with the laws of one. And it was a type of matriarchy society where the mother goddess was considered God. And so it was, it was a society that was run by females. That was Lemuria for you. Uh, not to mention, um, they were also a very hybrid race. They had... Certain members of the race were able to become aquatic. Um, certain members of the race uh, mixed with uh, bird-like species, so they were able to have wings and fly. And that's where we get the concept of angels with wings. They were these Lemurians who were hybridized with all these other extraterrestrial races. And they were flourishing for at least a, a million and a half years to two. And this is what happened. So during those days... The Lemurians were known as the mother continent because there were other seedings. In the region that we call Mexico today, there was known, that was known as the Yucatan Empire or the Yucatan Civilization, not the Empire, Yucatan Civilization, which was under the guise and direction of the Lemurians. In the region we, we uh, call today India, we had an advanced civilization there called Rama. Sorry about that. I just had a phone call. The Rama civilization was also seeded by 
those that were overseeing the office of the Christ and the seal of Pelador. So they were very uh, beautiful beings that were living in harmony with the Yucatan civilization and the Lemurian civilization. We also had another civilization in the region we call today China, and that was known as the Yu civilization. So we had four existing civilizations that came right after Lemuria that were seeded by the different extraterrestrial races. So we had Lemuria in the Pacific Ocean, we had the Yucatan civilization in the um, in Mesoamerica, we had the Rama civilization in India, the region of India, and then we also had the Yu civilization in the region of China. And then the fifth civilization that came to exist approximately 900, uh, or close to a million years ago, 900,000 years ago was Atlantis. Now, Atlantis in its original establishment was a beautiful, uh, glorious civilization. Because um, you have to understand, Lemuria was, was non-technological. They were more about spiritual evolution. Everything they did was conscious space. They had a very symbiotic relationship with the elements, uh, similar to the movie Avatar where the, the entire species was connected to the organism of the planet and they were living as one. That's how the Lemurians existed. They had no external technology. And then still, they were able to use their light bodies to traverse the different dimensional planes of reality and to travel to other star systems. So the other civilizations that came after them were very similar to them. Again, no technology. Technology, or what we call external technology, came as a result of the Atlantean civilization. The Atlantean civilization was established by different extraterrestrial races that came from the Pleiadians. And there was nothing wrong with them because the Pleiadians were also a very balanced culture between spirituality and technological development. So they were trying to bring that over to the earth in the form of Atlantis. So Atlantis was developed that way. And during its initial stage, it was a beautiful, marvelous golden age. Uh, everything was in harmony. They recognized Lemuria as the mother continent. They lived in harmony with all the other uh, civilizations, the Yucatan, the Rama, the Yu, Lemuria. It was a glorious, glorious planet. And this corresponds to the Eden, the, what the Bible calls the, the, the uh, Eden, the idea that there was this tropical, beautiful, uh, earth-like back then. But what happened was after a few thousand years, uh, perhaps even 500,000 years, the civilization of Atlantis, little by little, different members started infiltrating, members from the Orion group. The Orion group has always been the negative uh, side within the history of our galaxy. They started infiltrating Atlantis because they couldn't infiltrate the other civilizations. They were way too spiritually evolved for them to be infiltrated. But because the Atlanteans were, were um, also physical, at that point they were etheric physical occupying dimensions four, five, and six, living in harmonic density universe number two, they were able to infiltrate them. And little by little, the, har the established uh, Atlantean society uh, became began to change, began, began to change as a result of this infiltration. So the Orion group who infiltrated Atlantis started um, switching its its um, its its golden age into one of a dark age. Little by little, what used to be the priesthood of Atlantis, the spiritual council, uh, the Council of Twelve that used to oversee you know, the the civilization during its golden age began to fall because the priesthood was infiltrated. And it was infiltrated by the negative aspect of the Anunnaki. So remember how I was telling you, there's two factions of the Anunnaki. There is those that come from the line of Michael, and then there's those that come from the line of Lucifer Draco. So the line of the Lucifer Draco gave us Enki, by the way. So everything we've, we've learned about the Anunnaki is false. It's actually the other way around because those... Sumerian tablets were tampered by the priest of Belial, Baal Marduk, who was the son of Enki, Enki Poseidon. Enki Poseidon, the reason um, he's known as Enki Poseidon is because uh, Zeus in Greek mythology and Poseidon were actually Enki and Enlil. Zeus was Enlil, so it's the other way around. Zeus Enlil was actually guardian of Earth during those days. But something happened. Zeus Enlil had to be called to other another part of the galaxy 
to do war against the uh, artificial intelligence. Enki was left in charge, and that's why he rewrote all of history to make it seem like Enlil Suze was the bad guy, and he was the one that was, you know, the good guy and the protector of the human race, but it wasn't that way. So uh, this is contrary to what we've been taught, including the Sumerian tablets. They were all tampered with people. So Enki Poseidon was the result of the marriage between Anu, who was the Iberian commander, and Dramin, who was the uh, Draco princess of Orion. So Enki was both half Lyran, Pleiadian, and Draco, or, or reptilian. But then Dranki, Enki married uh, Damkina. And when he married Damkina, who was also of the royal bloodline of Draco, then they had Marduk. Marduk became known as Satan. Uh, to the Babylonians, he was known as Baal or Belial, B-A-A-L. And Marduk has been the extraterrestrial that has been running the show since the days that the, since they infiltrated Atlantis. They've been running what we call today the Cabal or the Illuminati up until the present day. And so how did they infiltrate? They infiltrated by using their... their um, their uh, power of being of the royal blood. They overtook the Council of Atlantis, and then Marduk took charge. He converted what was known as the priesthood of um, Amenti, and the priest and priestess of Amenti were then overthrown, and he established what became known as the Brotherhood of, uh, of the Dark Arts, or the Templar Initiate, uh, the, the Order of the Templar Initiate. There was many names to describe what, what, what he established, but that's when the Dark Brotherhood, or once again, the Orion Group, took over uh, through Marduk, because Marduk was 80%, 75% reptilian, and only 20% Pleiadian Lyran, but most of his reptilian genes um, were actually controlling his, his, you know, his actions and his thoughts. And then, of course, he aligned with his reptilian uncles from Orion through his mother's lineage that go all the way uh, um, that follow the original uh, Draco lineage of the Royal uh, Draco Galactic Empire. So he used his family to infiltrate Atlantis. He also convinced some of the Pleiadians and some of the renegade centurions and, and other humanoid, galactic humanoids to join his new uh, Dark Brotherhood. So what, we, what was once known as a golden age of Atlantis, little, little by little became the Dark Age. It fell dramatically. And then Marduk was in charge. So now he was introducing dark arts. He was, you know, instead of having priests and priestess, now we had uh, sorcerers. The sorcerers that were running the show for Atlantis. And what they were doing in order to establish world domination back then, because this whole concept of world domination... Uh, including the new world order of today goes back. It's just, is just, they're just trying to justify what they couldn't do in Atlantis. It's all originated in Atlantis, goes back to Atlantis. So what they did is they used an AC advanced crystal to harness a second moon. Cause back then we had two moons in order to bring it into the vicinity of the earth in order to threaten Lemuria, who was again, the mother continent representing the spiritual feminine aspect of, of spiritual evolution. And so the Lemurians tried to negotiate with them. They tried to plead with them. Marduk said, no, I, I, I am going to bring about world domination. I'm taking over this planet by force. So he was doing the exact thing that, the, um, that you know, Hitler was doing back in the 1930s. And so eventually they used that moon, the tractor beam, AC tractor, to implode that moon over the Lemurians. And then that's how they destroyed Lemuria. But luckily, a lot of the Lemurians were very psychic and very aware of the coming cataclysm that they were able to, um, you know, leave. To, some of them went to different star systems. Some of them went into the underground and lived in inner Earth. And they've been still living there uh, up until today. So yes, our Earth is hollow. That's another revelation that I talk about in my book. And um, the inner Earth dwellers were actually the remnant survivors of Lemuria. And then later, the remnant survivors of the good Atlanteans that decided not to side with Marduk. So they, when they destroyed Lemuria, um, they were uh, getting ready to also destroy the other civilizations, right? The Yu the uh, civilization, the Yucatan civilization, and the Rama civilization, which was also existing during those days. And um, they tried negotiating with Marduk, and Marduk said, no, you know, I'm bringing it about, if you guys don't submit to my power, I will also destroy your lands and, and your continents. So what they did is now they used that advanced AC tractor beam that was given to them by the Draco, to bring in an asteroid, a huge asteroid 
from the asteroid belt, which ones, which was once a planet known as Tiamat. But again, you know, the, I describe this in greater detail in my book, then you can learn what happened to Tiamat, uh, which has a lot to do with this war between the Federation and the Orion Empire. So anyhow, so they brought in a huge asteroid in order to implode it on the next uh, continent, which was going to be the uh, Rama, the Rama continent, which is today India. Um, and right in the nick of time, Nibiru, which was operated by, you know, Enlil, Commander Enlil, who was the son of Anu. Again, these are the, the positive Anunnaki, okay, because we only hear about the Anunnaki enslaved as they created as a slave race. There's, there's a lot of, you know, misinformation out there about the Anunnaki. There was two factions, okay? It's just, again, the records were rewritten. So right in the nick of time, the Battlestar planet that was working for the Syrian High Council of the Office of the Christ came in the nick of time, and instead of having that asteroid implode on Rama, they actually moved it. They used Nibiru to uh, use an electromagnetic field to beam the asteroid and then reverse it over to the Atlantean um which is Atlantic Ocean today, over to the Atlantean region in order to implode it over the Atlanteans. So right in the nick of time, Enlil, you know, Seuss, whatever you want to call him, who was guardian of Earth then, representing the bloodline of Michael, came in the nick of time with Nibiru to blow that asteroid over Atlantis itself. And um, that happened approximately 15,000 years ago. Now, you know, for about 15,000 years, it seems like our earth has been, you know, there was like a reset and we've been kind of re, you know, evolving again and stuff. But yes, so some of the Atlanteans that decided to um, not side with Marduk, who were known as the Osirian groups, uh, also went into the inner earth. And then later, a few thousand years later, uh, they uh, resurfaced over in Egypt to create the first golden age of Egypt. And that explains Isis and Osiris who were also part of the bloodline of Michael, of the good Anunnaki, Niberian, whatever you want to call them. So not all the Niberians were evil, okay? Um, and one of the reasons I would like to let you know that uh, the reason Nibiru um, wasn't around a lot of the times was because the way it was programmed by the Syrian High Council, it was a, a battle star planet that was uh, supposed to protect over 200,000 star systems. Uh, within our galaxy. So that explains its uh, 36 elliptical uh, year orbit. Every 3,600 years, it comes into our solar system, but then it leaves our solar system. And what it is, it's an elliptical orbit that actually reaches all the way up to Sirius B. But in that reach, it is patrolling other solar systems. So it was programmed by the Syrian High Council to um, protect the, you know, the 200 different star nations that had joined the Galactic Federation. And again, you know, Zacharias Sitchin and those uh, translators of the ancient Sumerian tablets never mentioned this because all those records were rewritten by the priesthood of Marduk Belial Baal. It's what the Bible, who the Bible calls Satan, by the way. And uh, so that's the reason why Nibiru wasn't around you know, almost for 3,600 years was because it was out patrolling other star nations that were associated and part of the Galactic Federation. And so, but again, it came in the nick of time, it blew the asteroid over Atlantis. And what happened was the Dark Brotherhood of Marduk later reorganized. And, um, and according to our history, they became the Babylonian, you know, the Babylonian Brotherhood. And so that explains the Tower of Babel, Nimrod, his father, uh, Kish, who was born of Ham. Ham was a reptilian human hybrid who um, was the progenitor of the Cabal Luciferian bloodlines of today. So that explains the negative RH concept, not the positive one that comes from Osiris and Enlil Seuss, but those that come from Marduk, Belial Bal, and his son, Nabu. Um, that explains the 13 bloodlines that have been ruling our world since ancient times. They were the, the, a hybridized race that was created by Marduk himself in order to justify what they couldn't achieve during the times of Atlantis. And so for about 12,000 years, our world has been going through these different eras where it's like for 2,000 years that, that lineage comes into power and brings about dark ages. Uh, and then 2,000 years more after that, you know, the lineage of Seuss and the lineage of Osiris bring forth golden ages, right? They bring forth commonwealths, you know, um, societies of harmonious justice, societies of righteousness where it's service to others. And that explains why 
you know, even Egypt had a period of uh, of um, of prosperity and and in um, you know a, a golden age for two thousand years. But then that golden age was infiltrated by the descendants of Marduk and Marduk himself. Because see, Marduk has been around ever since. He just operates from behind the scenes. So when people say our world has always been controlled by extraterrestrial forces who have been operating from behind the scenes, it's absolutely true. You know, the Cabal has always taken orders by these fourth dimensional Draco, who in turn, the fourth dimensional Draco, take their orders from this Animus collective. And in turn, this Animus collective, who is this AI cybernetic collective, takes take their orders from what used to be Lord Samana from the 11th creation, who is now the AI God. So the beauty of this all, people, is that we're living in a time where because we are the hybridized intergalactic super race and the earth is known as the showcase planets the intergalactic price of all creation is about to take our place in the cosmos as we begin a new heaven on earth it's almost going to be like the entire history of all these wars that have ever happened is going to it's going to be an alternative they an alternative universe where Everything's going to be erased. All the negative stuff is when 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 this transition takes place, it's almost going to be like none of that ever happened. Atlantis is going to resurface. Lemuria is going to resurface. All those worlds that were destroyed throughout the galactic wars are all going to just come into existence fully intact because of what the central race did. Now, who is the central race? The central race comes from the central universe, which oversees the 12 major creations. So the central universe, you could say that the central race are the the realms of infinity those are the 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 entities that have never had a beginning or end they are the ones that are facilitators of these of the time uh, what is called the you know 15 dimensional time matrix holographic reality um they are the facilitators of the 12 uh, major creations and then within those 12 major creations the you know tr um, hundreds and thousands of local universes that exist so the central race decided to step in and create a super hybrid race in order for this super hybrid race to begin to embody higher levels of density. So in other words, we humans on earth are supposed to surpass the creator gods themselves that are overseers of local universe. We have the genetic potential to become as powerful as a central race because what was installed in our genetics was a defense me mechanism that it, it is to destroy this anonymous AI collective and the AI God in a coming future war with artificial intelligence. And that's how important we are here on the earth. This central race organized this and, and uh, created this long ago because they were always 10 steps ahead of the AI God. So what they did is they went all the way back to time to create an alternative uh, version of, of rea or timeline, an alternative timeline Whereas not, no, none of these wars took place, the, the AI God, the Animus, and the Reptilians never existed. So when this shift takes place that we're undergoing at this time into the age of Aquarius, it's going to mark the beginning of a whole new heavens, of a whole new cosmos, and a whole new earth. And that is going to be um, like if nothing ever happened. Everything's going to be restored back to its original makeup. Now, on the other hand, the AI God is very intelligent and he knows that his that they create an alternative timeline where he never existed so what he is trying to do through uh places like cern um is they're trying to op create an alternative timeline where the people that are forcing the you know the medicine that are working for the big tech right like you know i don't want to say zuckerberg and you know and you know gates and all that stuff these people who are actually um, agents of the AI God, believe it or not, big tech is working for the AI God. They are at the core of this, you know, of this uh, of this final war against uh, against the evil. The way they are the evil, you know, we are the good. So they are at the core of all evil. So they're already working out a plan through CERN to create a further reality simulation, uh, a type where it's going to be more of a digital digital world where those that um, are not you know um that are taking you know what i mean and are for it and are pushing it um are going to be uh part of this transhumanist uh, agenda that is going to culminate in their translation because they're 
they're they're already copying our reality into this alternative universe called the phantom matrix the phantom matrix is a universe that this ai god facilitated as a result that exists outside of our 15 dimensional time matrix outside of our living organic universe as a result of this alternative timeline that was developed and uh, installed by the central race of the central universe who oversees everything and so that what he is doing and what he did is he's creating an alternative matrix and this has a lot to do with the concept of what Z you know, zuckerberg calls the metaverse the idea that they want to throw us into this digital further digital reality in order to eventually convert well not all of us but those that do not make the ascending timeline they want to convert them into machines in the long run but in the future there is going to be a clash between the organic ascending timeline and the artificial uh digital cybernetic timeline and at that point that's when the the super race as we activate and we enter this new era 12 strands of our dna are going like cable cords are going to begin to function and when they do many of us are going to have access to superhuman powers because again we humans on earth are so powerful that we are only using 4% of our full genetic material. Now, the other 96% is where our true divine uh, godlike powers reside. So as we activate that, by the end of the millennium, as we you know, explore at least a thousand years of peace, many of us are gonna be at the level of using 100% of our full genetic material. And again, that is a amalgamation of all the different races of many, many universes put into one genome to create a hybrid super race that was intended to defeat this future coming war against the AI collective and his phantom matrix alternative creation that he's developed over the uh, course of the last millions of years since the central race, you know, decided to alternate the timeline, which is now taking effect. So we are at that point right now. We are at the point where we're about to enter a better world, but in a thousand years, we will do one last final war against this AI God and his minions. And according to what I've seen in uh, different uh, probable uh, future uh, visions is, uh, according to what I know also from what I understand is that we do win this war based on the idea that when we use 100%, we are going to be way more powerful than this AI God. We're going to be operating. See, the AI God only has a... a um, has intelligence all the way up to the 11th dimension. We are going to have intelligence all the way to the 15th dimension. And so when we reach our full capacity, we're going to be three power levels over him and his minions. And then that's what's going to mark the end of him and his existence as we begin a new cosmic cycle. And this earth is going to be at the center of all that. And it's all being, it's already being prepared. You know, the billions of galaxies I've already join forces here within our solar system within the last 50 years to create an intergalactic union of of many galaxies coming from many many universes uh forming what what is actually now known as a super federation council and at the head of that super federation council people will be the star seeds when they start using their junk dna you know and the other uh, 96 percent of our genetic genome becomes active again so we are going to be kind of like the immortals, like the, the new gods that are going to be beyond that has be, as far as like the power level, we're going to be octaves, several octaves beyond even the creator gods that have existed. Because um, from what I understand, the creator gods that oversee the development of the different local universes on a one on one basis have been losing this battle against this AI God. Um, so what happened is many creator gods came together to um to unify their energies and forces in order to create something else and that something else is going to be manifested as a result of us using our junk dna so with that have said we humans on earth are the hope of the universe we are the saviors not only of planet earth but of the entire biological organic creation and i will end my talk with that good news namaste I hope everybody is uh, able to digest all this information and have a wonderful day. Can you, can you hear us 